what are we doing today? Hey, we're installing radon systems. My name is Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators, those looking to get in business. If you're a homeowner, of course you can stay and hang out. Tom's gonna hang out. So uh, what have we done today? Uh, oh, by the way, so if you're looking for a radon mitigator, a good place to go is www.nrsb.org. It's right down here. It's National Radon Safety Board. Just plug in your zip code right there, and then I'll pull up a list of certified radon pros in your area. So what we've done today is we have rebuilt this radon system. So I'm going to now show you a picture of the old one. All right. And so what was wrong with that picture? Well, it was not venting above the window or the gutter. Now we're back and we've corrected all of that. And so what Tom discovered, he tested his home and discovered that his radon levels were high. He just bought his home recently and the radon system was installed. And so they, like so many homeowners, they check that off and move on to the 90 other things that are, you know, uh, that you gotta take care of when you buy a house. So the old radon system wasn't working and there were some flaws as far as, you know, meeting code. What prompted you to test your system, Tom? Uh, the old motor was too loud, so I was gonna change it out. Right. And yeah. I decided to test it before I did all that. Okay. Make sure it was working right. Right, yeah, so when we got here, his original fan was grinding, um, but we discovered that uh, we needed to put something a little more beefier on. And so what we've got here is a high suction fan. And another thing that was kind of eating you up is that the old system was covering up your your dryer vent right there and also there was not a switch outside so we corrected that and i'll show you how also in this video we're going to cover one other thing ignoring sump pits so we've talked about we'll, we'll walk while we talk so lots of my other videos um when we talk about sump pits i say hey there's three things that we can do with regards to sump pits one is we can cover them two we can cover them and draw radon or air from them, or three, we can ignore them. And in this case, we ignored it, and I'll show you exactly how and why. Here we go. So the first stop on our way in is the sump pit. And the reason why we ignored it is because it is entirely contained. All it, it's, it's sealed with cement all around. So there's no vapor or, or gases coming from below the slab up through here, uh, like so many of them are. Also, you know, there's no perimeter drain system that empties in there, um, so we can ignore this one. That was a pretty cool thing to see, to bring up, because I can't really recall the last example I've had for you. So here we are at our suction point, and prior to this, uh, it was three inch line. And so there's kind of a debate amongst radar installers out there, what do they like better and why? And so if you'll notice with a high suction fan, the inlets and outlets are both three inch. And with the conventional fan, they're four inch. And uh, so some folks would argue, well, that's what they're designed for. That's what they should take. And uh, my only argument is using four inch pipe has always worked well for me. I wish I had a more scientific approach to tell you. That's what I learned on, and I've had more jobs go right than wrong by using it. It costs a little more, but when you find something that works, uh, unless you know something is better, I try not to deviate. So that's what we did. Uh, originally on this job, the switch was placed up there. So that's well over six feet, and that's a code thing. And so, you know, if Tom and his wife wanted to shut the fan off, they'd have to break out a step ladder and that's just not cool. So we made that into a junction box. And here we go with a four inch pipe and we have a new manometer reading. It's showing that it's working a lot harder. And so another thing that can kind of fake you out is this is a pretty darn new house in the grand scheme of things. When was this built, Tom? 97. 97. Okay, and there's no cracks in the floor. I mean, it looks great. So, when you have houses like that, you automatically assume that there's a good gravel base. And there kind of was and there kind of wasn't. And that is evidenced by the way the manometer's pulling right there. You know, that, that fluid is, is awful high. So, when, we, when uh, I pulled the pipe out and I, I reworked the suction pit. And, uh, okay, so I'm editing this video and I'm frustrated because 
When I shot it, I wasn't finding my words so well. What I was trying to say is, I was in a kind of new house, and it faked out the previous installer, and that installer used a conventional fan. The true gravel content under the slab of that kind of new house, it called for high suction, and so that's what we installed on this house. High suction fan, previously conventional fan, easy to do, and that's why I make these videos. Willie, tell them. Come on. It's a classic example of high suction where the gravel and uh, dirt content, it gets really dense right around in here. And it's still a little loose right around in here. And uh, in my other videos, we talked about that, how, you know, the footers sort of prevent the floor from smishing up, smishing the gravel into the dirt and mud. And so this system is pulling off of the perimeter as opposed to radially. So we've talked about that in, in a bunch of my other videos. So that's really it, just a quick video. And if you wanna see more in-depth stuff, I've got gobs of videos on my channel. Uh, if you found it helpful, be sure and hit that like button. It doesn't cost you a dime. And subscribe, I've got a library of over 70 videos at this point. And I uh, sincerely hope it helped you. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.